All right, welcome to 4.6. We're gonna build polynomial functions again, and it's actually not gonna be that much different from last chapter, or last section, 4-5. We're just adding in I's. I'm gonna do page 200, numbers six and eight. You're gonna do page 200, numbers five and seven. First now, though, take a look at the compact, complex conjugate theorem. And just like in 4-5, whenever we have a radical as one of our roots, we know that it's conjugate, which means just change the sign in front of the radical, is also a root. The complex conjugate theorem states that whenever there's an imaginary number as one of the roots, we know that it's conjugate, so just change the sign in front of the i, is gonna be, it's gonna be a root as well. So number six, they tell us to build a polynomial, and we know that the roots are three and one plus i rad five. So now I know that one minus i rad five is also gonna be a root. So three, there's no rad, there's no i, so there's no conjugate. But one plus i rad five, well, there's a rad and an i, so it's conjugate one minus, just change the sign in front of the i and the rad, is going to be the uh, solution as well. Sorry for looking at the book real quick. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything for that problem. All right, so to go from uh, roots to factors, I'm going to just change all the signs. So I'll work up here with the black one. And then now the blue. Okay, so I have a polynomial that could be the quantity of x minus three times the quantity of x minus one minus i rad five and x minus one plus i rad five. And there's a lot to do, staying organized, staying neat, and checking your work as you go is important. So you probably know what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna worry about the x minus three. I'm gonna save it for later. I'm going to worry about these. I have three terms in this uh, parenthesis, so I'm going to have three lines of work as I multiply this parenthesis with this parenthesis. So let's go. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. And x times positive, uh, this is a plus, positive i rad 5 is x i rad 5. All right. Next line, and I'm going to do my best to line up like terms. Negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative one times negative one is positive one, and negative one times i rad five is negative i rad five. Third line for the third term, so negative i rad five times x is negative x i rad five. Hey, those are friends. Negative i rad five times negative one should be positive i rad five. That goes out in the back to match up with its friend. And then finally, negative i rad five times i rad five. All right, you need to stop and you need to think. We have three things we need to do here. First off, negative times a negative, sorry, a negative times a positive is a negative. But i times i is i squared, and that is also a negative. So I have negative times a negative, so I have a positive. And then finally, rad five times rad five, well, the square root of five times itself is just five. So it's gonna be friends with the one. Again, there's three things going here. Negative times positive, negative. I squared, negative. So a negative and a negative is a positive. And then rad five times rad five is five. Big giant bar, combine like terms. If these don't cancel out, you stop there, you did something wrong, go back, check your work. Plus six, if those don't cancel out, stop, go back, check your work. So I'm left with x squared minus two x plus six, and I gotta bring down the squiggle and multiply them together. So the thing I'm gonna do on my next board is multiply those two together. x minus three times the quantity x squared minus two x plus six. All right, let me go get my board ready. And you can go get a head start and check your work with me because you know exactly how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna have two lines of work, each line pertaining to the different terms in the first parentheses. So x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative two x is negative two x squared. And x times six is six x. Negative three times x squared, line up your like terms. Negative three times 
negative 2x is positive 6x, and we have negative 18 equals bar, and it looks like our answer is x cubed minus 5x squared plus 12x minus 18. Now that x cubed, that tells you how many solutions, there should be three, right? And, well, how many solutions were we given? We were given two, we had to figure out the other one, which is the conjugate, so we had three to start with. We had three solutions to start with, which means our answer should have a cubic function. And you know what, because we're really smart, we're gonna write f of x equals in front of it, I ran out of space, in front of it, and there you go, all right? Uh, I'm gonna move on to number eight right now, and I'm gonna need some time and some space to do it. It's gonna be a big one, so make sure you have enough notebook paper. For number eight, they tell us that the roots are two, two i, and four minus rad six. Okay, two doesn't need a conjugate, but two i needs a conjugate, so change the sign in front of the i. Well, it's just easy, it's negative two i. And then also, four minus rad six, its conjugate is also a root, four plus rad six. So I have five roots, five solutions, which means I'm going to have x to the fifth at the end of it. All right, the next step, you guessed it, change all the signs. Let's try to keep our um, similar roots, like 2i and negative 2i are similar. Like, let's try to keep our conjugates together. So x minus 2, x minus 2i, x plus 2i. I'm going to go right down here, but you know it's a continuation, dot, dot, dot. Um, x minus 4 plus rad 6, change all the signs up there. x minus 4 minus rad 6, change all the signs down there. All right, now what you want to do is you want to start breaking these things up because we have a lot of math to do. We're going to multiply these two together. We're going to multiply these two together. We're eventually going to have to multiply whatever we get here with whatever we get here with whatever we get here. Now, since I only have a little bit of room here, I'm going to start with x minus 2i and x plus 2i. All right, see what I get. So x minus 2i, x plus 2i, I get x squared plus 2ix minus 2ix, they cancel out. So then I get, let's see, a negative times a positive is a negative. i squared, that's a positive because i squared is negative, so now we have that. x squared minus 4. All right, so I have x squared minus 4 when I multiply these two together, and I need to save it for later. All right, on my next whiteboard, I'm going to write this down, and I'm going to put these two together and save those for later so you can get a head start when you're ready. So I have to multiply x minus 4 plus rad 6 with x minus 4 minus rad 6. All right, three lines of work for the three terms in the first parentheses. So x times x is x squared, x times negative 4, and x times negative rad 6. Negative 4 times x, line up your like terms. Negative 4 times negative 4, and negative 4 times negative rad 6. Last line, we got rad 6 times x, rad 6 times negative 4, and rad 6 times negative rad 6, which is negative, oh, what am I doing? Negative 6. Big bar, combine like terms. 8x, those cancel out. If they don't cancel out, you did something wrong. Stop, go back, check your work. Plus 10. If those don't cancel out, stop, go back, check your work. All right, so I have this that I can also save for later. x squared minus 8x plus 10. I got to put that together with x squared plus 4, and I got to not forget about that x minus 2 up there. All right, so I'm going to do another whiteboard where I'm going to put them all down together because... I don't want to get lost with all these whiteboards jumbling around. Okay, so you are more than welcome to start without me and I can catch up. And really at this point, I have no idea what the best thing to do is. We have to kind of just do brute force mathematics. Oh, 
We have to do brute force mathematics one way or the other. So I think I'm honestly just gonna do these two together. It looks like the easiest thing to do right now and maybe that'll pay off. So I'm gonna multiply these two together. X times X squared is X cubed. X times four X is plus four X. Negative two times X squared is negative two X squared. And negative two times four is negative eight. And it looks like nobody is friends. So I have X cubed minus two X squared plus four X minus eight. Oh, times the quantity x squared minus 8x plus 10. Like I said, brute force mathematics, all right? I'm going to need one more whiteboard for all of this. So, uh, well, let's see if I can do it here, and I can always move on. All right, four lines of work because I got four terms right here. x cubed times x squared, x to the fifth. x cubed times negative 8x, negative 8x to the fourth. x cubed times 10, plus 10x cubed. Negative 2x squared times x squared, negative 2x to the fourth. Negative 2x squared times negative 8x, positive 16x cubed. Negative 2x squared times 10, negative 20x squared. 4x times x squared, 4, oops, actually that's so wrong, 4x cubed. 4x times negative 8x, minus 32x squared. 4x times 10 plus 40x. I think I can do it. Negative 8 times x squared, negative 8x squared. Negative 8 times negative 8x plus 64x. Negative 8 times 10 minus 80. Oh, I was so close. All right, let's see. I know this is really ugly and I'm super sorry. Check your work, check my work. I could totally be wrong at any of these steps. Hopefully I'm not, but the idea is that we carefully multiply this set of parentheses with that set of parentheses. We know how to do that. We just know that it's very tedious, very meticulous. So add up all the like terms. 8x to the fifth minus 10x to the fourth. Oh, what do we got? 26, 30 plus 30x cubed minus, looks like we got minus 40 minus 20, so minus 60x squared plus 104x minus 80. Put an f of x equals in front if you can fit it, and you have your answer. x to the fifth minus 10x to the fourth plus 30x squared minus 60x squared, sorry, 30x cubed minus 60x squared plus 104x minus 80, a lot of work for such a big answer, but good job sticking with it. And yes, it is a lot of work, but sometimes things are a lot of work. We can definitely do it. We just have to make sure we're careful each step of the way. All right, so that was just number eight. I had already done number six for you. Go on to number five and seven, get a little frustrated because I was frustrated too, and persevere, be wrong, erase it, and go check your work and get your right answer, okay? All right, good luck.